I mean, the ones you thought would never change, you're going to see change. Because he said, I can do the impossible. With man, it ain't possible. But with God, it is possible. All things. All things. Not some, but all. Amen. Ain't God good? Amen. Hallelujah. Mighty God, Jesus. All right. All right. So we're just going to be right tonight. Amen. With the word. Hallelujah. Let's go to Philippians. Amen. Just a little more if you don't mind. Thank you very much. That's plenty. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We just got some little old elf that comes in here sometimes and messes with us. But, <laughs> but it'll be all right. But if you go to Philippians with me, that is in the New Testament and that is a real Bible. I mean, that's a real book of the Bible. Yes. I know. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you in sync with me tonight, it's page 1620 in your Bible. Amen. 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 I got the wrong Bible. But let's turn to uh, Philippians chapter 3. Hallelujah. Mighty God. When you get there, let me know we'll get started. Amen. Amen. It says this in verse 6. You there with me? Verse 6 of Philippians chapter 3. Amen. I hope I pray you can find it. It says concerning zeal, comma, persecution of the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blamelessness. Change of direction in verse 7. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Lord God, as we come before you tonight, Jesus, there is none like you. Lord God, there is none like you, Jesus. And we thank you tonight, Lord God, for who you are. Lord, we thank you for this word, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for the infallible evidence of it, Jesus. The Bible says in Acts 1, the infallible proof of you, Lord Jesus. Those 40 days after you got out of the grave that you walked around, Lord God, before you ascended in heaven, Lord Jesus. And I thank you tonight, God, that this is infallible tonight, Lord God. It's going to remain, Lord God. You said your word would be here when heaven and earth would pass. And this world was on fire, Lord God, that your word would be established. And I thank you tonight, Lord God, that we have your word to stand on tonight. And be assured that we walk in the right way, God. We've given us this guidance. And I just thank you tonight for Jesus. Hallelujah, mighty God. He's awesome, ain't he, church? Amen. You can be seated if you can. Amen. I don't even know how to start this, but we may decide to get in the middle and work our way out. But he said in verse 6 here, concerning zeal and the persecution of the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law and the blamelessness, he said, but what things were gained to me, those I count lost for Christ. Amen. And sometimes we get a hold of, of, of things and I hate to be this way about it, but we'll just be about it. Sometimes we want attention to ourselves when, when, when it ain't about us. Amen. It's about Him. Amen. And that's what Paul's saying here tonight. Amen. He counts it as a loss because, amen, it's not the attention that the Lord ought to be getting. Let's just be honest. Let's be honest about it tonight. I won't take you somewhere. I'm just kind of building a foundation. Amen. I got a few definitions of, that I want us to get a hold of because sometimes when we look at the Apostle Paul, amen, when we study on him a little bit, sometimes we say, my God, this man's heartless. How can he have the Holy Ghost? How can he do these things? How can he preach this word? Amen. And be so stern. Amen. Well, it's having confidence. Understanding who Jesus is. Amen. I... I went back and I flipped uh, a couple of nights ago and I scanned over on old Smith Wigglesworth. And, and sometimes I know that uh, <clears throat> as crazy as this may seem, sometimes I go back to them elders. Because sometimes you get weak in you and you walk with the Lord and you wonder sometimes are you doing it right. And I go back and I look and I read on Smith Wigglesworth a little bit and I and William Seymour, and I, I read about these true men of God, amen, how they still held their ground. They might have got persecuted, and, amen, people might have thought they were crazy, but, 
That old Smith Wigglesworth, a man that had faith, that man had faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it's just awesome to read his, his biography, if I'm saying that word correctly, of the things that he gave credit for the Lord that the Lord done in his life and, and the things he was able to see and do and the revivals that he was, be, that was able to preach. But that man was a stern man. Very stern man. History says it, and they got film and documentary to him running Revival's church and people coming through a prayer line, mm -hmm. Sister Shelley, and him praying for them, and him running Revival, and them come back the second night and get back in the prayer line, and him literally throwing them out of the church, picking them up, dragging them out of the church because he said they had no faith. Right. <laughs> That's just how stern he was. Amen. If we pray, we're going to believe. Come on, amen. Oh, that's tough, ain't it? But he raised 14 people from the dead. Come on. History records that's through right. the Holy Ghost that he was raised folks from the dead. Right. Was able to do mighty and great things for the Lord because he had confidence in the great word faith. for that church. Amen. He ain't nobody he never said he was anybody. Right. But what I'm saying is having confidence tonight in the word. Right. Yes. He knew who Jesus Christ was. Right. And he understood that. Yeah. There was a guy that I watched that documentary that said that he had a newspaper under his arm went to meet Smith Wigglesworth a couple years before he died and the man wouldn't even let him in his house because he had a newspaper under his arm. Yeah. He said, you cannot allow that trash in my house. Amen. Stern. Believing. Wanting to stay clean. But the man done mighty things for God. So where the scripture said, you'll do greater than I have done. Mm -hmm. I mean, Smith met at Wigglesworth. He, he, he walked that line to that church. And I'm just laying the foundation, by the way. Because I want to take you somewhere and grab, I want you to grab a hold of something tonight. Amen. Because sometimes we in troubling times in the kingdom. We see things and we don't understand things. We, we get oppressed. We're not possessed, but we get oppressed. Sometimes, and it seems like, my God, where are you at, Lord? And we think sometimes, when is the team ever going to score a touchdown in this thing? Wow. We get close to the goal line, and my God, we fumble the ball, or, or we throw an interception, or we run out of time, and we have to go to the locker room. Something happens that we can't push in and get a score for the team. Sometimes it's like that, Sister Karen. We feel that, yeah. that we feel that, that we ain't going to make it. We feel like we've been forsaken, but I... I want to read something and read it real slow as we look at this tonight, amen, and I want you to see in our mind tonight that we keep our mind on Jesus Christ. We keep our mind on the work that he gave us to do. We keep our mind on the cross. We keep our mind on what Jesus sees. And I think if we pray that way, Lord, what do you see? Not what my fleshly eye sees. That's right. Amen. But what do you see when you see this person or you see this situation? That's the most things that I, I, I want us to see tonight. But let me read a few verses and then I'm going to try my best to preach them to you a little bit. But laying this foundation, I, I want you to see that, that, that when we get... I, let me say it this way. This is the only way I can say it. I... We work for a company in South Florida. We do Publix here. And, and Publix has a, a team of people that come around and grade their stores on their landscape and the way things look. <coughs> and that guy called me every once in a while with something, and it fires me up because it may be something they found that I can't believe they found it. And he said, well, don't take it personal. And I said, well, I do take it personal. It's what I do for a living. And living for Jesus, I take it personally. Amen. Because I love him. Amen. And I want I want to be the best I can be for him. Yeah. Sure. When the world sees me, I want them to see the Lord. Amen. And when he looks at me, I want him to know that he can count on me, Sister Carrie, for, for whatever I need to do for him. Whatever the task is at hand, I want to be able to do that. Amen. Sister Shelley, I don't want to fail him. I take this personally. Amen. Not am I mean or nothing or or maybe you're strong voiced or anything like that. Amen. I just take it personally. I understand what he done. Amen. I understand how wretched I was. Right. Yeah. 
I understand without that I wouldn't be here tonight. I wouldn't have made it, Sister Shelby. And I ain't made it yet. But I'm on my way. But let's read a few verses here. And he said, Yet doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I might win Christ. Everybody see that? Amen. It don't matter what we lose in this world tonight, church, if Amen. we got him. My God, Amen. if we got him. Amen. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And that's the most hard part that people get, can't get through. Amen. That they want to play the good old boy syndrome and the law will not help us today. Amen. It's through him. It's through the faith. It's through his holy righteousness. Uh, the church that we're going to make it. It's by his covenant. It ain't by the law of the Old Testament. We can't do it. The Bible says in Acts 14, Peter told, amen, he stood up and told them Pharisees that we could not abide by that law. We wouldn't make it. We would die. Amen. But it says here in verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Yes. That word conformable is a custom. Sister Karen, when you look at that, the fellowship of the suffering being made conformable unto his death. Amen. And we look at that and we say, well, my God, he died, but yet he rose again. Amen. And that's the point. Amen. Uh, me and, me and uh, Daniel was talking on the way over here. The point I, I try to make with people. Amen. That it's uh, the most uniqueness behind this is when I, Kenny Bray, died. When the old man died is the most memorable time that I can remember, Sister Shelley, is when I died, when I went under that water. When I made my mind up to live for the Lord, I can still remember Amen. the weights being taken off of yes, me. Yes, yes, yes. When I didn't have to live up to everybody else's expectations. Amen. When I made my mind up that I was only going to serve one and not many. Because you see the man named Legion, you remember what Jesus asked, what's your name? He said, my name is Legion for we are Many. I can remember when many lived inside this old boy. Many mean things. But I'm glad that I can only have to serve one, that I only have to answer the one tonight. I'm telling you tonight, church, being resurrected from the dead. Being resurrected from this life. Amen. And I know, amen, I was explaining when you have to look at it, it's that the world can't eat you. When you look at this and get a hold of it tonight to know that by him that you can make another day. When we get right before the Lord, amen, when we get our life where it needs to be, Sister Karen, amen, it don't matter whether we take another breath or we don't. It doesn't matter because we're going to be with him. Come on, amen. We're either going to serve him down here or be up there with him, one or the two. Come on. Because that's what the word tells me. Absent from the body is what? To be present with the Lord tonight. Amen. It's what it says. But let's look a little bit further because I want to show you something here tonight but that I, I want you to grab a hold of. Because sometimes living this life that we live, that word faith, amen, we know what the word, the Bible says. Amen, it's the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Amen, we know what faith is, but we have to hold on to that or, or we cannot please Him tonight, church. And it says, if by any means I might obtain unto the resurrection of the dead. Y'all see that word obtain? Yes. That means to succeed or achieve. And that's what Paul is saying here. That he wants to succeed to that place where Christ was. He wants to resurrect from the old man. Not as though I had already obtained it either were already perfect, but I but follow after, if that I might apprehend that for which also I am apprehended 
of Jesus Christ. Everybody understand that and see it. That word apprehend means to understand. And I know sometimes we look and we grab a hold of things. My God, and we see things happen in our life. And the very first thing we want is an answer. Amen. I can't tell you why the Lord, amen, picked cancer. I can't tell you why he does that. I can't tell you why he picked COPD, amen, to put it on a person, amen, that when they die, they suffer that day if they can't breathe. I don't understand, but the Bible says sin was created in the garden. So I don't have to understand that. I just have to know that God's in control of things tonight, church. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? I don't know why he takes a child at an early age. I don't understand that. I don't understand why he lets some of them get abused tonight. I don't understand that either because of that innocent blood. But one thing I do know, amen, that he's a just and he's a true God. And that's what I've got to hold on to. And that's something that Paul has got to us is saying here tonight about the apprehending of this. Amen. And he's saying this in verse 13, that he does not count myself to be having apprehended understanding. Understanding, amen. He said, but this one thing I do, amen, is forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forth unto those things which are before me, amen. amen. Do y'all see that? Amen. Yes. I can't help yesterday. Daniel, I can't help yesterday. But this one thing I do know is I can, amen, if he allows me to wake up tomorrow, I can do my best to fix tomorrow. If he allows me to wake up, Sister Shelley. He may not allow me. Y'all may see me for the last time tonight. Maybe my last day, Sister Rachel. Maybe he is. In the morning when my alarm's going off, Jennifer may bump a cold corpse. It could happen. It could happen. I could die in my sleep, sister. But he's a merciful God. Amen. Other way around. I could get up and go to work, and I ain't got to worry about Jennifer. I mean, Jessica and all of them, because they'll sleep till tomorrow. Amen. <laughs> I mean, I ain't got to worry about them. And I could come home. And I could go in there and Jennifer would be cold corpse. They wouldn't ever know it on that side of the house because they'll sleep all day and half the night. <laughs> Amen. But, but I could come home to that. Does that make sense? I could. But I know he's still merciful. He's still merciful God tonight, church. And I don't know why he picked me to preach. I don't understand that either, sister Carrie. But one thing I do know is I'm not going to worry about the old man tonight. Oh. What I'm going to try to do in all my life is to achieve goals for him. Try to try to extend extend his kingdom. Amen. Pick his kingdom up. Let there be an example in my life. Amen. Right, tonight. Amen. That people can see you can change. That's right. You can change. Amen. That's because right. he says in 14, I press toward the high mark. Yeah. Or the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. Right. Y'all see that? Amen. Daniel, it's important that you see it. Sister Rachel, it's important that you see it. Amen. Amen. We've got to leave that behind. Amen. And press toward the mark. Amen. I don't care. I, we can't. We can't squabble our lifestyle. We can't. We can't squabble the way we live. But what we got, what I do know is what this word tells me. If we put our eyesight on Him, He takes care of us. That's right. Because in Matthew chapter 6, it says this first. It says, first seek the kingdom. Right. Just not the kingdom. And the kingdom would be Sister Karen, who he is. Right. Who, what is heaven? What is this place? But it says, seek the kingdom and his righteousness. His code of conduct. His lifestyle. The way he lives. And then what he said he would do, he would add these things. He said you couldn't serve God in men. We see a lot of that. Even in the Christian world, even in the church, we get in trouble sometimes because we overextend ourselves. My brother that works for me at church, I mean at work, I see him Serving God in mammon a lot of times. He overextends himself. He tries to do way too many favors. And he stays out half the night trying to 
do favors for folks when you can't. You got to serve one. You got to serve God. Because God's the one that's called you. Anything you bow down to is a God to you. Anything you commit to, Sister Shelley's a God to you. Anything that's got you bound up, anything that you serve, amen, is a God. But we're looking at this tonight, amen, to apprehend, to obtain, to not let us, let us be in the limelight, because that's what Paul's saying. If I get put in the limelight, amen, Christ, my God, it's a loss for him. If you come to hear me preach, Sister, if you come hear me preach, amen, Christ is lost. He's lost tonight. But if you come, amen, to get in His presence, if in your mindset you're driving and you say, I'm going to come get in the presence of the Almighty tonight, well, then He gets glorified. No matter what i got to say, it's, what, it's all about Him. Does that make sense tonight, church? If we get our minds set on Him. That's what Paul's saying. That's what he's trying to tell the church. You know, the Pharisees, see, we still in old law. Sister Karen, we're still in the Old Testament, even in the New Testament. Because, see, the Pharisees, they wore certain clothes and they wanted to be noted. Amen. We see it today. Everybody wants respect. When a judge walks in the courtroom, everybody's got to stand up. And, hey, judge. And everybody got to sit down once he, you know, he comes and sits down. Everybody wants that respect. You don't respect, well, they throw you can't in the court and you go to jail for it. Now, everybody wants respect today. And that's the thing that we have to understand and get a hold of tonight is if we respect him and get a mind on him Amen. and press toward that mark of the high calling. Daniel, that's the most important thing, it's him. Because he said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. Yes. Sister Rachel, that's what he said. He'd never leave you nor forsake you <clears throat> if you'd stay with him. Come on. But your desire has to be to obtain. I, I'm not here for answer questions. I, I, I don't have it unless the Lord gives it. I know. The Bible says for me to just believe. Right. If I'll just do that. And I know he's got my back, sister. I'm okay. Yeah. And whatever the future holds, I know who holds that. That's right. yeah. I don't have to worry about tomorrow. <coughs> because he holds it all. And if the word be true, which I believe the word's true tonight, church, I believe it with all my heart. I know I'll make another day, sister. I'll be successful tomorrow, Daniel. Because he said he'd help me. He said he'd be with me. If we would just do that one thing, it's following after him. If, Brother Bo, if we'll get a hold of him and get our minds set, I live for Him. I may not understand everything. I may not understand all of His ways. But the one thing I do know is He said He'd take care of me if I lived for Him. Yeah. Sister Karen, I, you know, because the Bible says He's a mystery. One day we're going to know Him. Yes. One day you're going to get to hug Him and say, My God, why in the world did you? And then I can remember when. This went on and that went on. Can you, you know, love the note? I've seen this vision and you never give me the answer to it. Could you now? And it may not even be important then. But that's the way he works. I know in confidence, Sister Rachel, he's the answer. Yes. That much I know. Does he always give me the discernment of the Spirit? No. Everybody ever pray for it? Does he heal them all? No. Sister, does he always pray? That when I pray, does he always give me something to go thus say it to the Lord to somebody? No. It don't work like that. But when it's time, I want to be a vessel to be ready. I want to be ready. 
But I can't if I don't press toward the mark. If I don't want to be like him. It won't never work. Because he's not going to allow anybody. Amen. I, I wouldn't want to. You know, raising children, that's what I've taught mine. You know, two things you're going to do is get education and work. That's two things I know we're going to do in this household. It's two things that I know yes. we're going to do. And and what I'm saying by that, and that's the way, because it's the example that we, that we live. And he gives us that example, Sister Carrie, to be like him. I don't want to be around nobody that don't want, want to do what's right. I say this about Brittany. I remember Brittany when she was growing up. I, I thought we was going to have to hire somebody to, you know, pump her heart for her because she just was so lazy she couldn't hardly breathe. And that's just the truth. I thought we was going to have to pay somebody to breathe for her. But I remember making her laid sod one summer with me. I said, yeah, I'm going to show you what it is to work. And when I got through with that, I didn't have no more trouble. She's still in school. She's still in school. <laughs> but I'll tell you something. I thought we were going to have to hire somebody to breathe for her. You know. She worked. But you instill that in them. And that's the way the Lord is. If you get a hold of that, the Lord will instill things in you. <coughs> it'll, it'll always be there. Yes. It's awesome. I'm just curious what he's going to do next. Dang, I'm yeah. always curious like that. I don't come to church saying, my God, if we're going to sing three and take up prayer requests and go home. I, I'm i on the hunch he's going to do something. Wow. I'm curious what he's going to do. I don't think he wastes anything because the Word said he didn't waste nothing. So tonight, amen, somebody got something or the service is not over. You don't <coughs> receive something, Amen. You're going to leave here with something because that's just the way he works. Amen. And that's just how I feel it tonight, church. Let's stand if you can. I know this ain't burning one up, but...